Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, I've got some news updates for you, important news updates, renting travel and vaccines. Uh, much of this last year, uh, most of us, all of us have pretty much felt like we've been rowing uphill and not going anywhere. Will that change sometime in, in the near future or the distant future? Uh, anyway, going to look at some news here. First of all, let's talk about uh, renting requirements and restrictions uh, here in 2021 in the Philippines. And uh, there are some, if you're using Airbnb, there are some condominiums that are requiring uh, a PCR test a, uh, or a saliva test. A, a, uh, they have requirements that you have a Barangay Village health certificate. Uh, they may require that you have some other travel authority uh, from where you are coming from, depending upon what other province you're coming from. Uh, so you need to know that up front. If you're renting from Airbnb, make sure. I know I have a friend who rented at one place here in Cebu City and found out later that uh, there were restrictions in place. They had to have a health certificate from their uh, from their barangay, from their province, they'd already left their province, so there was no way they could get that. Uh, so they were allowed to cancel that booking, and they found a new place that didn't have uh, those uh, strict requirements. I'm aware of a few places that uh, require a PCR test and or uh, some kind of health certificate from your local village barangay uh, health office. Um, some require that you that you have wear the masks and face shields any place on the property except within your unit. They have restrictions on if you can have a guest. They have restrictions on if you can have a guest. How many guests can you have? I was recently offered a, a really good deal on a condominium, and I was ready to sign the lease virtually, and uh, found out there were all kinds of uh, restrictions. You could only have one guest. If you had two people living in a one-bedroom condo, you could only have one guest, not two. And uh, we occasionally have uh, another couple over. So that wasn't going to work out. So that pretty much canceled that. You, you also had to make a reservation for a one-hour use of the gym or a reservation to use the pool as well, one person at a time, I believe. Another important thing for you to check is how easy will it be for you to come and go uh, Cebu City, for instance, and other cities require quarantine pass. Uh, some require that you have a, a QR type code and a, and a tracking app on your phone. Cebu City, we have a quarantine pass. Our security just has a limited number of those passes. Uh, ask and find out if you need a pass to go out to the mall, wherever, how long you can have that pass. Uh, one particular place I'm familiar with, they say, oh, you can only have it for two hours at a time. Well, that can create a problem, obviously. Um, if they if they don't have enough passes for the many people that will want to use it at any given day, you might not be able to uh, go out at all. Really varies by area. Cebu City has that quarantine pass in effect. Mandawi City, Lapu-Lapu, Mactan do not have uh, quarantine passes, I don't think. And uh, there are some areas around the, the Philippines that are on more strict. More they, they try to localize it to certain villages or even streets on villages if there are a lot of cases. Uh, so you really need to find out what the situation is in your local area. The reality is people are moving about a, a little more anyway. And cases have risen a little bit, but I can't get uh, too much details about the testing, that type of thing. Um, and obviously people moving around, uh, the chances of catching any kind of disease. Uh, the, the problem is also that because the hospitals have been focusing on one area, they have apparently been neglecting uh, people in other areas, so deaths have gone up in, for other diseases. Now on to vaccines. Uh, here in the Philippines, the government's going to launch a vaccine tracker this week to tell you uh, where they're processing the vaccines, what type of vaccines, I guess, help people find places to get vaccines. Uh, there's still a certain percentage of people out there who are, uh, they're not anti-vaxxers, but they're leery. They've heard about the side effects 
of uh, some of the uh, some of the vaccines and they're a little bit leery and they might have preferences as to uh, which vaccine they take. There is uh, those people who are reading up on those kind of things. Um, you know, there are uh, there are a number of countries in Europe, for instance, who have stopped using, pulled uh, a certain vaccine off because of the potential for blood clots and uh, serious uh, side effects uh, while they're studying that. Anyway, let's see. The, uh, the reading here, uh, Laxon last week said that if government did not ramp up vaccination, uh, its target of inoculating 70 million and achieve herd immunity might not be achieved by an, until 2033. A little bit of an exaggeration probably, but uh, makes the point. And the same case, I read the European news and I, I think the same thing is happening across the world pretty much. There just isn't enough uh, vaccines to go around. It's not getting distributed at fast. It takes time to make all this stuff. Spokesman explained that the price, uh, the pace of inoculations was slow because the sli uh, supply of vaccinations was limited. The China-made uh, CoronaVac, the first vaccine to arrive in the Philippines, was uh, not recommended for frontline medical workers. So the workers were given the option to choose for their brand adding that the pace of uh, vaccination would pick up once different brands come in. Um, and it's got a little bit about uh, what's happened so far. And here's a map of the uh, European uh, countries who have suspended the AstraZeneca vaccine while they continue to look at it. Really, these vaccines are still in testing mode. They've been approved for emergency use, and, and that's what it is. Usually it takes uh, uh, four, five, six years to test vaccines. Another possible solution, ivermectin, a drug that's been around over 30 years, uh, been used billions and billions of doses, very, very safe, uh, apparently is effective in preventing and, uh, and curing uh, many cases of uh, this particular virus, and you can find lots of information online about that. It is cheap, it is apparently effective, it is available, all over the world and uh, it's not getting much press but there is a lot of information online there's I think over uh, 50 studies either finished or still ongoing I have found that many pharmacies uh, here in uh, the Philippines will tell you that they are out of stock uh, but I've come across a couple that uh, that say they do carry it but they're out of stock so apparently it isn't demand here and up to 4 million vaccines by July as more vaccines are expect, expected to arrive. I know that they are negotiating. And uh, here the, the provinces, the cities can negotiate their own uh, deals with vaccine makers as well. So you're not, it's difficult to find out uh, what's available any given place, any given time going forward. But you can see that was a July uh, statement, uh, July August, September, October, the, the months roll on. And here again, they've signed, uh, Philippines signed a deal with, for 30 million supply uh, with Novavax. Now, uh, now on to the latest in international flights and travel. Uh, you're still required to have the uh, Trays app on your phone for contact tracing flying into the uh, airlines here. Uh, the airlines told to scale down their Manila international flights to 1,500 a day. And, uh, and you have no foreigners, no non-OFW Filipinos in the Philippines uh, from March 20th to April 19th. And that is apparently is because of the present increase in cases in the Philippines. And these are the people, except for the following people, uh, international travelers are not allowed. If you uh, had a visa you thought you were coming in, uh, so these are the people, holders of 9C visas, seafarers, medical repatriation and their escorts endorsed by the Department of Foreign Affairs, Office of the Undersecretary of Migrant Workers Affairs or Overseas Workers Welfare Administration. Distressed ROF, uh, returning overseas Filipinos, I think, endorsed by the Department of Foreign Affairs Office and emergency and humanitarian cases. Uh, the memo cites the new cases uh, recorded on Monday 
the reason for uh, shutting everything down like this. So the obvious bad news is if you fit in one of those categories that were being allowed to uh, fly in here, uh, Balak Mayan uh, situations, for instance, uh, and you got your bags packed and you're ready to go and you've got uh, time set up and scheduled flights, uh, that may be a problem. It's very risky at the present time, uh, flying, planning, travel any place in the world, unfortunately. It's very difficult for businesses to survive. They don't know what the governments are doing from one day to the next, one week to the next. How do you, how do you plan your business going forward when uh, they can shut you down uh, in a day? When this thing started over a year ago, who ever thought that, that a year later uh, that we would still be experiencing uh, these kind of lockdowns and travel disruptions? Uh, anyway, it is what it is. And uh, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.